Today, we've got a very special guest, great friend of mine, starred in many movies together. Welcome to the Criminal Connection podcast, Mr. Josh Myers. So to say thank you to my grandpa for everything he's done to help him like boost his career, he named the killer in Halloween films after my grandpa. That's why the killer's called Michael Myers. Single. Young, single, free and ready to mingle. Yeah. And then I got pulled over one day on a random pullover. I got arrested. Naughty boy. Oh my, oh my, all my secrets are coming out now. You get greedy. That was that was my problem. I got greedy. You got high on your own supply, Josh. And then when I got cast to do Foot Soldier Free, and obviously working with Craig and you, just it was fantastic. See people say, oh, not another Foot Soldier. I just go, don't worry, there's going to be another ten. Car blew up. Bang! It was. A, I think they put too much explosives in. They must have. When you fell and there was no mat. <laughs> <laughs> There's normally a crash map, right? You know what I love about Nick is that he puts his heart and soul into every f***ing, not the film, every f***ing scene. And you actually worked with Prince Harry's bird? Yeah, Meghan Markle, yeah. I want to say a big thanks to all their sponsors. We love you. And without you, we wouldn't be able to make this amazing show. Big thank you to Dr. Green NFT for being one of our sponsors of the show. So the Dr. Green NFT project is coming out of Portugal and it's going to revolutionize the way that medical is transacted and distributed throughout the world. Thank you so much to Unisystems Freight UK, this amazing freight forwarding company. If you've got anything you need sending overseas, make sure you get in touch with the Unisystems Freight boys. If you want to learn any more about any of our amazing sponsors, Make sure you check out the links in the description below. So welcome back to The Criminal Connection with your host, Terry Stone, AKA The Podfather. Today, we've got a very special guest, um, great friend of mine, um, starred in many movies together. Welcome to The Criminal Connection podcast, Mr. Josh Myers. Woo! Hello, you all right? <laughs> How are you, mate? Not bad. How are you, Gator? Good to see you, mate. Good you too, you. mate. Oh, well, as you. always, very good. Oh, I appreciate you coming on. And, uh, Pleasure, anytime. I'm looking forward to talking about your illustrious career. <laughs> yeah. How we met yeah. on Grinder. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell everyone that. That might be true if you do. But, Josh, you know, um, you've been acting now for, for a long period of time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you've established um, yourself as a true crime. Um, geezer acts. I know you don't just do that, yeah. but obviously that's been the, the, the body of work. And I think yeah. obviously for all the listeners and all the viewers watching and listening to this podcast, um, I think they'd like to know who the real Josh Myers is. Who the real Josh Myers? That's a hard one. I, I don't know. Are, you, are you ready for this? <laughs> so we're going to go way, way back. Yeah, so way when back. you was a little boy, where did you grow up, Josh? Well, I grew up, I grew up um, in Edgware. Yeah, went to school around there, went to primary school. Um, then I went to secondary school around there. But ever since I grew up, I've always loved acting. I've, uh, you know, it's in my family, as you know, which we're, we're stumbling upon. I'm really on. disappointed. I thought you was going to literally sit here and say, when I was a little boy, as far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, well, you wanted to be an actor, but that's yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Well, yeah. How old was you? Like? I must have been 10. Wow. Yeah, definitely about 10, 11 years old. I was just wanted to be an actor. Always, I loved it. I loved being. Um, I'll tell you what happened was basically, uh, my dad and my grandpa, they're in the film industry. Obviously, my grandpa's not around anymore, but um, you know, my dad, um, he's a big film produ uh, distributor. My grandpa owned loads of cinemas across the UK, also a distributor. Um, so ever since a young age, like having time off school or going to like, you know, like when you've like gone the summer holidays, you've got like six weeks off, haven't you? I, I used to love going to work with my dad because I'd go to the offices, I could see all that there'd be like a film library, posters everywhere, films, just be like, I'm like in it, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I got to go to film sets with my dad and I was just like, and I could see how everyone gets treated and it's just, it was just amazing. I was like, oh my God, I want to be an actor. Mm -hmm. So my dad was just like, well, why don't you go to drama school? Mm -hmm. And that was that. Then I went to Sylvia Young. Put your on. But yeah, went to, went, to Sil <laughs> went to Silver Young Drama School. Uh, I think I started there about 13, wow. 12, 13. And then, as they say, the rest is history. Yeah. I just carried on going. I never gave up. We've got, we got to talk about um, your dad's name as well. Oh, my it's, my oh, my, it's my grandpa's name, isn't it? Wow. My dad's dad. So, yeah. So my This is a great bit of movie trivia for you all. Yeah, this is incredible. Not a lot of people believe it, but when they start Googling and researching, they're like, oh my God, but cause it is quite surreal, I'm about to say. But basically, uh, my dad's dad, my grandpa, was called Michael Myers, and he helped John Carpenter um, 
he distributed uh, Halloween all over the UK because he owned cinemas. But prior to that, he did a, a film called, John Carpenter did a film called Assault on Precinct 13. Brilliant film. Yeah, it's a great film. Uh, and it bombed in America. It did shit. It did really crap. One of my favourite movies. I know, I loved it. Um, but then my grandpa took it to the UK, distributed it all around London, made a big name for um, John Carpenter, made him quite a success across the pond, you know, like back in America. So people started taking him seriously. Yeah. So his next project was Halloween. So then to pay homage to my grandpa for everything he's done, he called my grandpa the man with the golden handshake. He basically said, everything you touch turns to gold. So to say thank you to my grandpa for everything he's done to help him like, boost his career, um, he named the killer in Halloween films after my grandpa. Did, so that's why the killer's called Michael Myers. Did your granddad used to wear that white mask when he went no, to No, I meet. used to wear the white mask. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll tell you a story about it. Yeah, so that's why the killer in the, all the Halloween films I called Michael that. Myers is after my grandpa. Yeah, because he. Uh, I've got a big uh, letter at home from, my gra from uh, John Carpenter on my dad's wall in the office. It says... Um, um, the man with the golden handshake, if it wasn't for Michael Myers, I'd be working in some motel somewhere, sweeping up. He made my life, made my career. So that's why I called it after him. That is him. amazing. Crazy, isn't it? I like, it's, what a great story. I mean, it's, it's crazy because if you, you think, like, it's quite an iconic serial killer film, like, in all over the world. Yeah. And my grandpa is actually was named after it. I remember the music. <laughs> oh, it's great, wasn't it? Bum, 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 bum. It's always time it came on, I used to get goosebumps. Like, yeah, go on. I think I saw, I think... I'm pretty sure that I either saw that on a video yeah. and it scared the shit out of me. And what, then, Halloween films? Yeah, the first one. Yeah. And then um, and then it was like every Halloween there would be yeah. another one come out. Yeah. So it'd be like, right, we've got to go out to the cinema. And watch yeah, the cinema. I, think, I think the original was re really good. They, they've all been all right. I think the last the last one I think was Halloween Kills. I think it's done now. Oh, well, you can never know. He always fucking back then. He's been shot, stabbed about a million times. He just walks down on the Terminator, doesn't he? It sounds a bit like Rise of the Foot Soldier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just keeps getting resurrected. We keep getting resurrected. But, um, yeah, in Rise of the Foot Soldier, if you die, you don't really die. You can come yeah, back Yeah, you can come back any time, hopefully. <laughs> but but we've... Uh, so you, you're at 13, and uh, obviously you're doing the Sylvia Young thing. So um, was that mainly theatre? Uh, no, it, it was everything, really. Because obviously when you go to drama school, you've got to sing, dance and act, don't you? You've got to do all three, really. I'd love to see you singing and dancing. Well, I can't... Sing, and oh, I can't see you pirouetting, Josh. <laughs> Go, no, no, no. Oh, I'll tell you what, mate. I can't. I can't <laughs> sing, and I can't fucking dance. I can't fucking act either. But uh, <laughs> no. So basically, um, uh, uh, my grandpa knew Sylvia. So basically, you know, said a couple of things, or whatever. And she was like, you know, I can't just let him in because he's your grandson, whatever. He said, why not? He punched her. I would have done. Uh, so I don't want to punch her, but I said, why not? He's my yeah, son. No, you know he, what? He I am? Her. He got don't make him put that mask on. Don't <laughs> make him put a mask on <laughs> yeah. and come in your house. Just the sword, yeah. <laughs> Do all of you and Sylvia Young. Mm. So yeah, so that was it. So um, basically, cut on story short, I had to woo her with an audition. Did you flat on your eyelashes, sir? Were you like that? Yeah, I was going like that. <laughs> she said, "I've got to woo her. I've got to like woo her with an audition because I said I can't sing and I can't dance. I just want to act." She was like, "Well." You need all three at this school. So I did a I did an audition from train spotting. Right. Uh, I must have been about what, just not even 13. And I just literally blew her away. I remember just her sitting there just going like this. And I was like, oh, I've done something wrong. She was like, that was unbelievable. What did you, what was, you, you didn't play the baby in train spotting, did you? No, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't do that. But uh, I, tr I tried. I thought, <laughs> I just imagine you I, walking I, in with a nappy on. Yeah, I was trying to be, <laughs> I, was trying to, I, was trying to be I was trying to be proper method and just right. walking over shitty nappy <laughs> no um yeah so I, I can't remember what the scene was but I, it's, it basically goes what, what um, character was it oh i can't remember it was, it was it uh i can't remember his bloody name now uh, it was the bit where he goes have you have you ever um uh he talks about heroin and stuff and he's like out of his nut and he um says um uh have you basically ever tried heroin? that it's was like, ewan mcgregor right i think it was i think it was ewan mcgregor i can't remember i was like 13 years old when i died but i was reading it from the book and i had the script on I just found a bit that would be cool. He talks about, it's basically talking about take the best orgasm you've ever had, times that by like 100, and you're still nowhere near the hit of Really? Yeah, and that, that's the kind of thing I went for. And I, mean, I, was, I, watched, I watched that movie and, uh, you know, I thought it was a great movie. Yeah, it was a good um, film, yeah. I mean, Danny Ball's a great director. Oh, he's right? a fantastic director. But I, I did, when I watched that movie, it did make, I mean, it is a great advert not to take drugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to be like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's you're just, not. Nah. I mean, no, nah, not and, good. And uh, yeah, but so, so that was amazing. So that that got you in the door. Mm. You wooed her. Yeah. Um, and then and then what happened after I pushed that? Pushed her down the stairs. Oh, wow. Yeah, she deserved it. <laughs> it's now called the Josh Myers School. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've won the fucking school. I've won that. 
the gaff now, it's mine. Um, no, yeah, so that was that. And then I just started going to classes. Uh, most, mostly, like, I'll do improvisation, I'll do script work, how to act in an audition, how to act in front of a camera. Um, just all little things like that, which really help, you know, like, has helped me, like, career-wise so far, because certain things that I've learnt through the years, through other actors, through yourself, through Craig, through Nick, through Andy, through all these people, you know, everyone's got a little bit of advice they can give you because they've all got they've all experienced different things. So, yeah, I've just I've just learnt so much growing up being an actor and obviously being in drama school as well. It does help. So, what, how long was you at Sylvia Young for? Was uh, it for? About three, four years. Okay. I was there. So then you've done that, and then when, when did you actually get an agent? Was that at the end, or was so? That... I, so after that, um, my my friend uh, my friend was uh, Sylvia Young a long time before me. She's uh, no after me. She's a bit younger, but. Um, yeah, she she was with an agent called, uh, and I was getting blast from the past, a girl, a lady called Sharon Harris. Mm. And she was my first agent. Uh, I think I was like, I was driving, I must have been 17, just 17. Yeah. And we used to go, and she did drama classes as well. She'd do like a drama class, plus she had an agency. So I went there for two, three years, did that. I was getting little bit, little bits of auditions here and there, right. but obviously, then I started getting a lot of film work. And then I, but I got a lot of my own stuff. It's all put networking, who I know, but one thing that was good for me is I never just got a role. I'd get a role, but I'd have to audition for it, right. which I think is better for me anyway, because I don't want people to go, oh, yeah, he just got the role because of his dad, because of his grandpa, because he knows Terry, because he knows Andy. I've got to audition for the role, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's just been going really well so, so far. So, so obviously, you know, um, growing up in, in North London, you know, did, did you ever sort, was you ever exposed to sort of uh, what they would, would say called wrong ones? Wrong uns. <laughs> we are f wrong uns, tell. No, I know that, but I mean, I mean, just just growing up. I mean, obviously, your dad's obviously distributed movies, yeah, and obviously you you, you got a, a joy for acting, yeah. Um, but obviously, London is a is 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 a great place, f yeah, um, uh, for wrong uns. <laughs> yes, it is. No, you're hundred percent right. No, grow, um, it was actually funny. Like grow, growing up, obviously, I, I love my acting, so. That's that was always my focus and my path to try. Did you do and, any sports though when you? Were yeah, playing? oh yeah, I used to play football all the time. Uh, loved my boxing. I got actually actually went to tire boxing. I did tire boxing for about ten years. I still do it now, yeah. not like professionally, but like two once or twice a week. I go to the gym, hit the pads, do a bit of sparring. Did you just any fights? Nah, like, just, you to just keep, did it for just keep fit. just yeah, keep fit. Um, I mean, I would say I've had fights in the ring there but it's like not judge it's just like heavy sparring but it's basically like me and my mate kicking the shit out of each other so it basically was a fight because yeah, uh, especially if you're training with your mate they don't, they don't give a f do they they just yeah. smash you they want to break your nose for some reason yeah. I don't know but yeah that happened many times to me as you can see my bent f***ing nose no I, th I think it's uh, it's character in it my I, nose I think absolutely and, yeah. and I had when I used to box my nose was actually bent so it was actually round to the side like I, that your septum was and, bent uh, and, and I, I'm not vain at all but then what I did was I found, like, as I was getting older, it was harder to breathe. Yeah. And uh, the guy, the doctor said, oh, we said, look, he goes, we can just do that and it's done. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And he said, but we've got to put you out. So right. I, went, I went to the hospital and it was actually really funny because um, uh, I don't know if you've ever been put under anaesthetic. Yeah, I have many times. But it actually f***ing sends you off your head. Yeah, it's weird, so, isn't it? So <laughs> it's f***ing weird. I remember literally, they give me this anaesthetic and they wheeled me through into the operating room. Yeah. I remember looking up and I saw these lights and there's this woman looking down at me and she goes, hello. I was going, it's you. We used to work together in McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I just like went out. Hello, and I woke up and I was like, fucking hell. And I, you sort of don't remember anything. You, really? And then, but then I could see my nose. It was like yeah, that. fuck it. Yeah, they're all um, stuffing up here. They've got to put it all out. The worst thing is when they pull it out. Pull it out, that, yeah, yeah. I've had that. Well, you, did you have a bent septum, the bone at the bottom? I, I think so, because they straightened it and then they... Yeah, but I mean, yeah, it's, still a, little bit, yeah. it's still a bit squidgy. I've but. Had, that, I had that done the first time I got it broken, but then they just said the other time there's no point if you keep training and boxing and sparring. If you keep getting punched in the nose. Yeah, you keep getting punched in the nose. <laughs> don't have a nose operation. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was it. Um, no, but yeah, so, so wrong -uns. Yes, I grew up with a lot of wrong -uns. Right. I was probably one of them as well. Right. But who isn't a f***ing wrong when you grow up? Right. Actually, not a lot of people. That's rubbish. <laughs> Some people are actually nice. Everyone's wrong -uns. Everyone's wrong -uns. Um, um, but, um, but, but, but yeah, so growing up, I mean, because... I mean, what was it like growing up in North London, sort of? Because cause you're, you're 37 now, right? 37, yeah. Yeah, so growing up, you know, sort of 20, uh, years I'll ago. be honest, Tell, I don't really remember much of my 20s. Right. I'll be honest. That was, that was purely down to the fact that I was 
partying all the time, drinking, doing a lot of drugs, hanging around with wrong people, wrong ones. You know, no, you know, I don't do drugs anymore. I, you know, I, there was a long, long that was in my past, but I did do a lot of it. So I don't really remember my twenties growing up, and it was like it, it kind of affected at the time. I, I, I always think now, like, where would I be if I never did that? Right. Because my career would have might have taken off bigger then. What, why do you, know do you, what I mean? you so, so you definitely think that um, that hampered your success? That a hundred percent, yeah. I think I think you know, if you're drinking and doing drugs every weekend or during the week, or you know, you're just you're in that party vibe, you know, then you're not you're not dedicated to your craft. Do you know what I mean? To really really pursue well, what I you mean, want to do and, and i mean you know for anybody who's never taken drugs i mean yeah what would you just do it like recreationally or would you like go on a bender for like three days i would do recreationally and sometimes i'd go on a bender like i'd go like two three days no sleep just drinking doing drugs partying with girls doing this doing that and then it's it's the aftermath you feel great at the time but then the aftermath is just absolutely disgusting right. and it you know we, you know i suffer with depression as it is anyway in my mental health so would you say that that the depression come out of that or do you think you'd always been like that no i've always had depression way before right. drug taking days even when i was a kid i used to i'm um, primary school i didn't want to go to school i didn't want to get up but i didn't know what it was right. I'm, you know if i'm a young age i mean Lots of people talk about mental health and depression and, and, and these different things. And, and obviously you've had it from a young age. I mean, when did you, when, when did you, but you, did you ever get to the root of what caused it? Well, that is the million, that's the million dollar, million pound question. I still don't know what causes my depression. Now, do, do you know something? Sometimes, you know, when you go through it and sometimes you might be prescribed drugs, sometimes you yeah. might have counselling or sometimes you might, uh, have somebody help you through it and, and yeah. sometimes you know they can actually pinpoint what's caused it and then and then try and fix it but yeah um but but how so really for well for, for, your, for your whole life really. yeah I've, I've yeah i've suffered a long time you know I've, you know it goes up and down at the moment i'm in a very good place you only get really depressed when you talk to me <laughs> yeah basically okay is this done yet can i go home <laughs> no i um yeah no i just it's been it just goes up and down like that but i mean the last I'd say the lot since probably January this year, I've been, until now, hopefully it carries on, yeah. uh, I've been in the best place physically and mentally for a very, very long time. Well, that's good. Like, that's I, feel, good I feel fantastic. I feel really good. I'm working out every day again, focused on my life again. It just goes it just goes in waves, Tell Just one minute I'm happy, one minute I'm sad, one minute I want to cry. Yeah. That's depression. That's what it is. But, you know, I'm, pardon me, I never give up. I just, I wake up every day, I'm grateful that I'm alive and I'm, everything's going good. My daughter's doing amazing, my life's going good. What would your advice be to anyone who's listening or watching this yeah. that feels down or low or does suffer from depression? What, yeah. would you, what tips would you give them to um, enable them to sort of cope with it and maybe, maybe get themselves out of that sort of dark place? I mean, look, it, it is easier said than done, you know, like getting someone out of a dark place because I've been there many times and someone just says, oh, come on, you can do this, you can do that. But it's, it, you know, people who are watching this, if, they, if they're suffering with depression, they'll know that it's, very, it's, you can't just tell, they've got to do it themselves. You've got, you, you can't rely on other people to boost you up. You've got to do it yourself. Yeah, people boosting you up helps and it makes you feel good. Seeing your friends. Uh, I'd say a massive one is talking. You've got to talk to someone. You feel depressed, you feel unhappy, you feel upset, pick up the phone, call your loved ones, call your best mate. Is that call why you ring me like three times a day? Yeah. Is that why you send me naked pictures all the time? But absolutely. But it I, makes I, me happy, I, so I, it's fine, it works so out. So we've got that relationship yeah, where we can yeah, do yeah. that I, and, I, sometimes and not be offended. I'm like, sometimes I'm in a business meeting, I'm like, oh, I want it to tell again. Oh, for f***'s sake. <laughs> He's wearing his mankini. That's, it's all hanging out. It's terrible. <laughs> I didn't think we should talk about the man, Kenny, but... Oh, um, sorry, cut that bit out. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. It was nice. Yeah. Early Christmas but, uh, present. But, but you think that's the key to talking, the actual... 100%. If you suffer with any mental health issue, mainly, de you know, mainly depression, I'd say definitely talking... Talking saves lives. Do you, think, do you think talking to your loved ones or talking to people that aren't necessarily that close to you so you can actually just offload on somebody? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I've got I've got a therapist that I see once every other week now. I mean, it used to be once a week, now it's every other week, and it's going to get once a month, you know. But, um, you know, there's still demons I've got in my head that I've got to deal with, but I talk to her because she's an outsider, and she's very good. She's very good at uh, what she does. And I talk to her, and I tell her my problems and how I feel that day, 
Right. I write stuff down in the morning. I get, I set myself goals. I do like, I just do like, I just, I just want to be happy every day. And I think that if you want to live and happy and be happy, another massive thing for me is I got rid of all negative shit out of my life. I don't have any negative people around me anymore, and that includes old friends, new friends, exes, anything like that. You, if you're negative towards me in an, in an environment that I'm in, nah, see you later. So that's another big, that was another massive thing for me that I had to get rid of certain people in my life. It's actually quite funny because I've I've done the same thing all my life, yeah. and, and and occasionally people say, oh, you know, why don't you talk to them anymore? When you were about these people going to these school reunions, yeah. you know, there's one person I speak to from school. Right? Right. People go, oh, that's a bit weird, you know, didn't you really have any friends at school? I said, I had loads. But I think the problem with being alive yeah. is you go through life and you meet people and depending on where you are on your journey yeah. and where they're on their journey, sometimes you're aligned yeah. and you can go together. And then other times, sometimes they go and you're still on that path, yeah. or sometimes you go and, on that and path. it's on that path. And the thing is, you know- It's if, called growing if, up, it's life. It's, it's growing up, and also I think, um, you know, I, I, I think a, a, a true friend yeah. is someone that you don't speak to every day, Yeah. you don't see every day, yeah. you could not see him for a month, yeah. and then you see him, and it's like- you never, It's like you, you pick up where you left your off. Your best mates, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I'm just saying, I've got, I've got and, like, and I've got a lot of people and, like that. And, and, and they're your true friends, because yeah. Because people that need to be in your life every day, yeah. every minute, every hour, why haven't you text me, why haven't you done this, why haven't you done that? Why haven't you like a picture on Instagram, why haven't you done this, why haven't you done that? Yeah. We're just like, f off, you're too needy, yeah. right? And you know, I always think it's funny when uh, people, you know, get upset. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, if, if they put you in these groups and they're like, everyone's messing on these groups yeah. and then you don't comment and people go, well, you, are you not c contributing? It's like, yeah. mate, I'm f busy. Yeah, of course. And I'm on about 50 of these groups and I will contribute if I've got something to say, but if yeah. I don't say anything, it's not because I'm being rude. Yeah. It's just because I've got nothing to yeah, add. Yeah, it's a waste of time, and, isn't it? And, and you know, my, my wife um, on her school groups, you know, they're, they're all on, because we've got kids, obviously, yeah, they're, they're, there's all these groups going on about this, picking someone up. Yeah. Freddie fell over, Julia, yeah. Julia a leg, and you know, oh, where can we get this? And I, I just said, I said to her, please do not ever put me on in those groups. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I made your phone non-stop and it's just like and it's like what, why does anybody send these messages you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. it isn't important you know yeah, what I mean? yeah my, my dog's and, friend's but, cat fell over and needs a blood needs a plaster on his leg yeah don't care <laughs> off mate do you know what I mean it but is. these women love it though don't they oh, I no. bet Maxine loves, loves on the phone talking to her pals to, to be honest I, I I, I, I just... Because these women, they love... Like my, my, when, I, when I go to my mum's house or something, sorry to cut you, but like, sh sh I'll come and say hello to her. She's like, oh, one second, just one minute. My dad... And then I walk around the corner, my dad's sitting there watching TV. Like, all right, here he goes, oh, fuck, mum's been on the phone an hour already. I'm like, oh, chef, what she was just on it? She said, she'd be, she said she said it'd be one minute about an hour ago, Josh. <laughs> They're talking about the same fucking thing. <laughs> So what do you, you, do you know? Oh, so I don't funny. know how they do it. No, oh, well, are you like that on the phone? I, I can't speak to even my best best friend in the whole world. I'm like, I'll oh, cut minutes. Yeah, sweet. All right, mate. Yeah, no worries. All right, bye, bye. If I'm excited about something or we're having a laugh about something, I could talk to someone for an hour on the phone. Yeah, yeah. But I think I think the difference between men and women yeah. is men are like matter of fact, blah blah, boom yeah. boom, off. Where women are actually they actually want to have a, a chat or a bunny. Yeah, want to have a bunny, yeah, yeah. A bunny for yeah, like an hour. Proper, yeah. And um. My mate made me laugh yesterday. I, was, I had some lunch with a friend of mine yesterday, and he said, um, "He said, he said, I'm on holiday, right?" Mm. And he said, because he does this like iPad job. He said, "I wake up in the morning. I've got fucking hundreds of emails to do." So he says, "I go in the gym, yeah. then we we'll work out, and then we we'll work out if I'm running or whatever. I'm just doing the emails, getting them off my desk. Come out of the gym, jump in the shower, have breakfast, right? And then he goes, I read the paper, and then I've got to do a couple of calls. And my my goal is by midday, I'm done." And then I can actually have five or six hours on holiday to chill out. Yeah. And then at six o'clock, I've got another hundred emails to do, oh, a few more my. calls. But he said, I just want to have that thing. Yeah. And he said, he said, so I come back from my calls at midday, and he goes, and I'm I'm fucking stressed out and I'm agitated, right? Yeah, of course. And I'm like that with a suntan lotion. He goes, I lay down on the bed and I put my earpods in. I think, ah, oh, can relax now. And then the missus goes, can you put some sunset lotion <laughs> on my back? And he's like, for f***'s sake, no I've rest. just come back. You've yeah. seen me doing it. Why don't you ask him? <laughs> yeah. not quality. And then the other one is when he's on a call yeah. and he comes over to the table and he's like, and, and then she starts having a conversation with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She goes, I'm, I'm going to order another coffee. And he's like, what? 
I'm on a, why are you t I'm on a call. Do you know yeah, 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 yeah. They do that. My, my, <laughs> yeah, my, my, so my ex used to do that to me when I was on the so phone. I'll, I'll be on the phone to like someone important, like a film or whatever. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know, mate. Yeah, I really am. And then she'll just come and sit next to me and like cuddle me. And I'm like, this is a private conversation. Can you f off? Like, imagine I sat next to her, like, you know, I'm, not, I'm single now, but you know, imagine you sat next to her, like a wife or girl. They're like on the phone, like, and put me, and you just come and sit right next to them, like ear, ear wigging to everything they're saying. <laughs> Fucking, you're like. What are you doing, you But it is. <laughs> Strange fuck these people. But it is, but it is funny. I mean, I've, I've, uh, have you got a, a, a girlfriend at the moment? No, I'm single. Oh, okay. Single, so ready to mingle. Young, single, free and ready to mingle. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't, um, I don't, want, to, don't want anyone. I've got, I got my daughter, I've got my family. I'm happy. I'm happy and single. I just, you know, the first time, like I said, in a long time, I'm actually happy. So um, I just don't want anyone to ruin that at the moment. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm content in life. I feel great. Um, but yeah, no. So, so going back to, you know, you, you, you've got this agent, you left drama school, you're do, doing a bit of acting. Um, when would you say you, you, your first actual break when you actually thought, wow, you know, I'm, I'm actually doing this now? What, was, it, was it a film or was it uh, a... I, th I think my, my f well, I, mem I remember my first ever film role. That was a film called uh, Psychosis. And I'm in it, I was like 18, 19. I had to get, I got killed in the first like 10 minutes. Uh, but it was a role for me. It was just like my first actual role on a film set. Which is I've been on film sets before, but not actually acting in front of the camera. This is my first, like, right, I've got a, got a role now. And um, I had to get uh, this, it wasn't like a serial killer thing. It was like this guy was just a lunatic and he went around killing campers and stuff. And I remember I had to get my neck bitten. Uh, so it's all prosthetics. You, kill, you were killing people? I got killed. Oh, okay. So I was in it for like 10, 15 minutes. And then, I get, then we all get killed and then the film opens. Um, and it was... Um, yeah, it was, it was very scary for me. So I was like, you know, I reckon 18, 19, like I said, and the director, you know, I remember Reg Travis, he, 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 was, he, he wrote and directed that. And... Um, Amy Winehouse is... Uh, yeah, 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 ex, ex fella, yeah. Yeah, 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 he was a good, good pal of mine, Reg. And, um, yeah, he just said, like, I want you to watch American Werewolf in London. I said, why am I watching that? He said, well, you'll see, when the werewolf attacks the geezer on the moors, how he screams, how he reacts. And that is how I want you to react when this guy jumps on you and bites your neck. Right. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm watching Would that. You like ah, yeah. Ah, well, that's what I was scared I was going to be like. Because <laughs> obviously I was 17, 18, 19, whatever. I had a bit of a, not like deep voice. I ain't got deep right. voice, but I was a bit, sound, not as, I sound boyish. And then uh, I just done it. I don't know how I've done it. I was myself. Imagine that, like, they're like, you're standing like that. And they're like, well, he's going to jump on you. He's going to bite your neck. When that's action, you've landed on the floor. We're going to pump the machine. All the blood's going to come spraying out. And we've got two or three takes on this, Josh. It needs to be spot on because I've always got to do the prosthetics again and this and that. No pressure. Uh, no, yeah, no pressure. <laughs> so then there's like the director, producer, uh, all those, you know, it's like on a set, there's like 40, 50 people on the camera like that watching me. And they're like, and it was freezing cold snow. I was shaking like that. Like, can you stop shaking, Josh? I'm like, yeah, no worries. Then the blood's all running down my neck. I'm freezing. And on action, they're just like, right, action, he's just bit you go, and I just did it. See, lots of people that watch and listen to this don't realise how much fun it is working on the film oh, when it's yeah. snowing oh, and you're fuck. covered in yeah. and you're semi-naked. I mean, that's, yeah, that's really fun. baby. Yeah, it's really fun. <laughs> Loved it. Yeah, my cock went I didn't even have a cock. I didn't even do that. It just went. I had nothing. Kind of like, where is it? Where yeah, is it? Where 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 is it? I think I had another little role in another Reg Travis film called Screwed. Well, I remember that. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, he was in that, yeah. Um, so I played a prison officer. I played a Greek guy called Panos. Um, that was fun, because um, I can play Greek, apparently, because I look Greek or Romanian or Kosovo, I don't know. That's what they say I look like. Yeah, uh, yeah I played a Greek guy, and it was, it was really good. It was, based on, uh, it was just based on prison life, really, and what it's like to be in prison and uh, the attacks on prison. You know, one of my cellmates in the film tangs himself and gets my reaction. So, yeah, that, that was a pretty cool prison What was film. your reaction? You walk and go, oh, my God. <clears throat> no, I, I just, uh, well, when I saw him hang, hunging, well, first of all, I shit myself because I didn't realise they were doing that. They didn't actually, I've oh, got that's, that's quality, though, isn't yeah. it? You walk, oh, they, they, like, didn't tell me they, were, they didn't tell me they were hanging someone. They just said, oh, when you come in, you're going to find him dead, but we don't want you in the cell yet. We're just setting up. Well, I suppose as an actor that you can react yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. So when I walked great. in, I was like, f***. 
out and he was like and the guy hanging there wasn't really hanging obviously it was all set up in harnesses so he's like all right mate <laughs> i was like all right fuck it this is a bit for real i was like what's happened to you he's like well, obviously i'm hanging and i thought like, oh yeah it makes a lot of sense doesn't it um and then he was just like you're gonna wake up and you're gonna hear a bit of fluttering and um yeah you've got to see him he's hung himself so they want your reaction so i did that screamed like a girl shit myself and then yeah that was it so we shot what did you go and do shows what did you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. That, that's exactly how the director wanted it as well. Did he go, oh, one yeah, take? He just said, well, he, he you just were said, one take, Josh. He just said, me, that was the best take I've one ever take, seen. Josh. Yeah, he yeah. said that was the best take I've ever seen. Uh, especially how you did that scream with your hands as well. <laughs> he loved it. Oh, my God. Ha ha. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> and, uh, um, and then after that, obviously, you're probably in your 20s now. Yeah. Um, did somebody actually say to you, try this? Or did you actually, just because everyone was doing it, you just thought, f*** it? I wanted to want drugs. Well, I started with heroin. Am <sighs> no, I joking? I didn't really. Because <laughs> yeah, you watched, massive joke. Because you watched Train Spotting. Yeah, because I watched Train Spotting. I got proper method. Right. No, um, I think I first started with, I think a lot of people when they grow up, they started with weed. Right. Start smoking a bit of weed. Then I started selling it. Because right. I just saw, that, you know, you can make money out of it. And just being a little shit, really. Just right. think, oh, well, I'm a little, I'm a fucking top boy gangster when you're not. Right. And then. Did you, did you call, did you have like a street name? Uh, no, I didn't actually. Okay, I, didn't I, I, was trying to think, I was trying to think of what would I be called if I had a street name? Mushane. Mushane Moisha. Moisha, <laughs> Moisha Blue Balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I started doing that. And then I got quite heavy into that. I was making quite a lot of money at a young age. Like in my 20s, I was making thousands a week selling big bits of puff. Yeah. And then I got pulled over one day on a random pullover. Uh, and they pulled my car over, found my drugs, found my scales. I got arrested. Uh, I think I was, that was just for my 21st birthday. I was about 20 something. I'll never forget it. Yeah, I was driving on the way to uh, Harrods to, or Selfridges to go and buy my then girlfriend at the time a birthday present. And stupid c me had to go drop off like half a box of puff to my mate, and I didn't. But I said I'd do it on my way back. And on the way over there, they're just, they're just literally just jumping out, going, "Right, come in, pull over." I was thinking, "Fuck!" I was thinking, "Well, just relax. They're not gonna like, don't smell. It was all vacuum sealed in the boot and whatever." Um, and then that, that was it. And then what happened was at the time, I just bought my car, but it was still registered to the dealership and not to me. Right. So that's why they, it flagged up. Right. So I was thinking, so I think, oh fuck. But I didn't know at the time why they, so I just pulled over, didn't So that was bad luck, it wasn't something grass Yeah, no, no, it wasn't grass me up, no, it was just bad luck. And then got pulled over, there was loads of police all around there. And he's like, have you got anything on you you shouldn't have? I was like, no, no, no I'm going to Selfridges or Harrods, whatever, going to tell them what I'm told, told you. And they're like, oh, we've got reason of suspicion that you might have some, some drugs in here. But I was like, why would I have drugs in me? I'm a personal, I was personal training at the time. I think I'm a personal training top on, but I used to wear that to like, so they'd look at me and go, oh, he's a personal trainer, he wouldn't be doing drugs. Right, I can't start doing like. Yeah, yeah, start doing press ups in front of the pretty Yeah. yeah. Clap, um, clap, clapping press ups. Yeah, yeah, so that didn't work. And they just like, my boot, found the box, stunk, and that was it. Arrested me, spent like 24 hours in a police cell. Had to go court. Did you? Uh, did they? What did they charge you for? Was it just? Uh, I got done with attempted supply, um, and yeah. So yeah, got caught with drugs, attempted supply because it was quite a big bit. Yeah, just what did I get? I got community service, and like a hundred pound fine. Not a lot of fine, but it was like I did like do like hundred fifty hours community service because at that time that was my first offence. So they were just you know whatever. But and then that was it. I stopped doing, stopped selling puff, and then obviously my family got upset. They did not didn't know what I was doing. Put uh, shame and tribulation on their family. I know, it's terrible. <laughs> I was the, the black sheep of the family, as they say. Still am. Yeah. Uh, but I'm a good good sheep now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and then and then it progressively, um, I think, I, don't, I still to this day don't know the age of it, but, you know, even someone said to me the other day, when was the first time you ever sniffed cocaine? I've like, got to be, I reckon, 21, 22, something like that. I, I tried it. And I've got addictive personality, so that probably didn't go down well because I liked it and it was good. Um, and then I just carried on. I didn't. I wasn't doing it every day, but it'd be like because I'd be working or doing whatever. But on the weekends, it's like I couldn't wait to do it and go out. Um, so yeah. So I mean, when I say I don't remember my twenties, I do, but I don't. You know what I mean? It's a bit of a blur. Do you, do you think? Do you think that that also because you, you know, had that sort of criminal offence, but then obviously you then started partying, you was taking drugs, going out. Do you think that also put a, a, a weight on you from that sort of depression? Yeah, 100%. 100% it did. I think, you know, any, anybody, you know, anyone who suffers with any mental health or depression or anything like that, doing drugs is probably the worst thing you can do because you're on such a high 
and then when you crash and it's like it's all coming out of your system it's like look i can't tell you want to kill you oh, me i want to jump off a bridge mm. so it's like the worst combination even my therapist says like why are you why would you be doing drugs when you know like you feel great and you know you know you know before you do that line before you sniff before you do do anything that you know the consequences after but you still do it um but, you know, thank God I'm, you know, I don't do drugs anymore. I'm, you know, I think I'm nearly two years. I mean, you, you got a like, part of jump on. I thought you'd have had to just say no. Yeah, just say no. Just yeah, say yeah, no. yeah, I know. <laughs> no, so. Um, uh, but I'm, no, but I think it's good. I, mean, I think I think it's good that you've gone through that experience and come out the other side and then yeah. realised, like, what, what, what detrimental effect drugs yeah. had on your career. Massively. And also on your depression. Yeah, huge. Um, and then, and then, you know, you went from... Doing that, did you get in any any more trouble, Josh? Yes, I did. Naughty boy. <laughs> all, my, all, my, all my secrets are coming out now. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not proud of it. I'm not a gangster. I'm not anyone. But it's good. Can I say, it's good to talk about it. It's good that, that when people watch this and they see you in the movies, they know you're the real deal. They know you've been through it. And they know your experiences and they know that you've learned from your experiences. Of course, you've got to learn. You listen, and that's the li key. life is an experience, right? And you learn from your mistakes. And that's a, that's a saying and it is true. You know what I mean? Even with women or going back and forward or do, should I sell drugs? Should I shouldn't? But I know I shouldn't because I know the consequences now. Back then I was just seeing the readies and the money coming in. I just thought, wow, I'm, you know, I'm not even 20 and I'm making two, three grand a week doing like just making phone calls and doing this and but uh, you know everyone always used to say to me oh, it will come to an end one day and you'll get caught everyone gets caught in the end don't they but that's i mean the, the interesting enough josh i mean we've had all sorts of people on this podcast and yeah. uh, uh we've had you know gangsters that have we've had mob bosses we've had drug dealers we've had all sorts of people yeah and what's always been interesting is after they've been through that cycle and yeah. they've come out of jail and they've lost everything they all say what a fuck is. nobody goes Oh yeah, great. Let's go again. Yeah. You know what I mean? They yeah. all they all say I wish I'd never done that. I wish Of course. You know, but so it should have would have coulda, you know what I mean? You don't at the time you if you know, if you're a massive cocaine dealer, you're making millions a month and then you think, Oh, I'll do this for a couple of months and then you get more money and you think, Oh, I'll just carry a little bit more and you get greedy, don't you? You get greedy, and that was that was my problem. I got greedy. I could see how much money I could make selling puff, I could see how much money I could make selling cocaine, but then I got addicted to it. I was sniffing more. I was selling. You got high on your own supply, Josh. I got high on my own supply. It was what nice did Tony Montana say? Don't yeah. get high on your own supply. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't trust me, because uh, you lose money as well. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that was again going through my, I'd say, not a shit stage in my life, because life is good. I had a good upbringing. Everything was good, but it was just my addictive personality, my depression, how my mind works. It was just like I loved doing it. I'd go to my mate's house, go out, with sniff, party, drink, girls, this, that, the other. You know, I'm 37 now, but it's but but what but well what? My lead so what 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 um, other trouble did you get into in your twenties? Are you grass or what, mate? No, no, I'm, <laughs> just, I'm just interested. I'm, I'm not getting grass. going here. I'm uh, just interested. I've got loads to tell you. I've got loads to tell you. Oh, loads. Yeah, yeah, loads. yeah. Um, so what else I got in trouble? Um, I've been in trouble with the police quite a lot, <laughs> to be fair. Uh, fighting. I used to get arrested for fighting all the time. I've been arrested quite a few times. Again, stupid. But I, I've, I've got. I had a very good lawyer, um, criminal lawyer that I, I won't name yet. But. Um, it's kept me out of a lot of trouble, right. you know. But it's just stupid stuff. It's nothing like I didn't murder anyone. I didn't shoot anyone. It's You're just, still time. You're only 37. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you know, give it another year or so. I might shoot someone. <laughs> um, no, uh, yeah, I just, you know, you just, just do stupid things, Tell, do you know what I mean? But like I said, you do learn from your mistakes because if I didn't get caught, I'd still be doing it. And who knows what I'd get into. Right. Do you know what I mean? How much more drugs I'm selling? What drug dealers I get in trouble with? Who wants to shoot me? This... There's so many things I think about that. If I never got caught, would I still be doing that? Would I be doing my acting? It all leads you down a different path, doesn't it? So in a way, I'm glad I got caught because I, I probably, you know, I was making stupid money back in the day. And when, when and obviously hanging around with these wrong uns, having a few tear ups, yeah, doing a few, um, you know, illegal activities. Do you yeah. think that actually, you know, when you when you're playing these roles in these movies, or you've got to draw on these characters, do you think it's been useful? to have that background. 100%, 100% because, you know, there's certain things in films, as you know, like you might, you might, you might see certain people would say certain dialogue and you would say, well, you wouldn't really say it like that. Or there'd be certain amounts of cocaine on the table or how they're sniffing it, how they're making it, how they're doing whatever, how they're chopping it up for the scene. And you just think, mm, it looks a bit unrealistic that, don't look right, let's make it a bit more realistic. And they're like, oh, how do you know? And I'm like, well, you know, I did this, I did that, I used to do that. It don't look real, that looks fake. 
right. you know, just little things like that. And the director might go, oh, all right, well, let's make it look realistic. Let's make it yeah. so the people watching go, oh, yeah, that looks proper. Right. Right. I mean, been there, done that, yeah. sniffed it out, done everything. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, so, so you've gone through this crazy, like, thing in your 20s. And then um, I know you've had these breaks, but when yeah. you say you actually, your first role, when you actually thought, yes, I'm fucking... Getting there. Yeah. Re honestly, I'd say uh, Foot Soldier, the Pat Tate story. See, I thought it was Green Street. Um, yeah, actually, that, you're probably right, actually. And the only reason, because that was when, um, I I mean, you know, when you're in, in the business, right, whether you're acting, whether you're producing, yeah. you're aware of people popping up in different things. Yeah. And I think Green Street, was it Green Street 3? Yeah, never back down, yeah. Yeah, so Green Street 3 was when... And then you did an army thing with Noel Clark. Yes, I'm Soldier. That was right, yeah. I did Green Street uh, with James Nunn, who's a really good director. Um, and then after that, you're right, I did I'm Soldier. Yeah. Uh, good job on me, really, because you'd have forgotten yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank God he's here. <laughs> but, yeah. but, I, but, I, but then I started thinking, now, oh, you know, uh, Josh Myers, you know, who is Josh Myers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then obviously we did uh, the... Um, uh, Pat Tate story. Yeah, Rise yeah. of Foot Soldier Free together. Yeah, yeah. We, we, was that when we first met? Or did we I meet? think we met. I think we've met a couple of times before that. I, I, but I think properly became friends and lovers on Foot Soldier Free. Yeah. We just but, spent most evenings gazing into each other's eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've got lovely and, eyes. And I've got to say, you've got lovely eyes as well. Well, mine are very dark. Your eyes are very light. So yeah. you have a bit of light with the dark, right? Yeah, no, maybe you're right. You... Green Street is probably the first time I got recognised, and then I did I'm Soldier, and then when I got cast to do Foot Soldier Free. And obviously working with Craig and you, just it was fantastic. And I think I think what was what was really fun for me was we obviously become good pals. Yeah, of course. And we've had this ritual, Josh and I, for all the viewers and listeners at home, whenever we're on a movie. Yeah. Or whenever if we work together, or we're doing anything. We yeah. always have to find Chinese. <laughs> yeah, we've got to find it because yeah, everywhere we go, we yeah we everywhere we go, we've got, we go, we got to find a nice Chinese. We find yeah. the Chinese. Yeah, exactly. Everywhere yeah. We go. That's and it's it. a little bit like Big John when he goes, "Who wants a?" In Chinese. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, maybe it's just a London Essex lads thing, but yeah, yeah. You know, but we've had some good Chinese. Just, yeah, we know. have had some very good Chinese. I actually. think the best one was in South End. Yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. Was, that was spot on. That, that one, was it. The one. Yeah, yeah. That was the one. And that was the last. The last one we went to, the one in Stoke. Yeah, that was good as well. Was it Stoke? Yeah, that was good as well. Yeah, that was good as well. That was nice. And it was double lively, now, wasn't yeah, it? It was one. <laughs> got, he got me pissed. <laughs> Let's get two bottles of wine. No, that was you. I think you said. Oh, no, I got no, us pissed. No, no, you said no, no. We we have to have another bottle. And I was like, but we. I worked to my Josh. He was like, nah, it's fine. Yeah, you know? don't worry about we it. We've seen each other for a while. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Let's, just, let's just get smashed. Um, and then obviously on, 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 uh, on the Pat Tate story, I mean, there was, we had some laughs on that. Yeah, we did massively. What was, what was let, let's remember some stories, mate, because... Uh, well, I think, I think the, uh, well, the what, one thing that I loved, apart from working with you in the scenes of you, I mean, I think everything we did was just, I mean, you know, every, even like today before we come on this, it's like batting the straight away. It's funny. We get on really well. We're like brothers. Obviously, you're the older brother. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. oh of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, we, we always have me I'm and, like the dad always, you never had. You yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we always have a great time. I love working with you, man. It's just fun, isn't it? You know, you're going to work and it's going to be serious when you're on camera, but it's fun, good camaraderie. It's good fun working with you and all the boys. But um, yeah, Foot Soldier, the Pat Tate story, I think, oh, there's so many funny moments. I think the funniest one was in, when we was in the, in the, in the, on the set and it was like the strip club. You know, we was all, all loads of us sniffing, partying, doing dancing, drinking. That was that was funny. That made me laugh. What about the when we was in the house? Was was that when we went through the door? Um, oh yeah, when I went when I when I, when I smashed that geezer through the window. <laughs> oh yeah, and when you threw the TV, you weren't even meant to throw that TV on the set. I know, but you know, we're, uh, what again, f television? I gave you it. <laughs> So I was like, he was like, don't throw it. And the, I think the director said, don't throw the TV. And you just came in, picked up Parliament and just threw it. But I, it smashed everywhere like the TV. No, but do you know, do you know when you're, you're in the moment? You know, yeah, yeah, you just yeah. do it. And, and I think when I picked it up, I was going, Argh. and then the idea was to just hold it. Yeah. And then it sort of just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just, it just lost... It just um, slipped. Yeah. I, I, I had the bat of fingers that day. Yeah, yeah, what, throwing it like that? Yeah. No, it was good. Yeah, it was good. I think, but also my favourite scene was when I was... Um, there's so many favourite scenes, but the one, the iconic one, you know, the one prostitute, two prostitute. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, that, I mean, that, that went viral. I mean, but, I mean, people regularly... Right. Yeah. Quote, and and you can always tell a good film when people quote the dialogue. You know yeah, hundred I mean? percent. And, and the prostitute thing. Um, I mean, there's so many. Uh, the, the Welsh thing. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know. Uh, I mean, there's just so many. 
And it's just so funny. And what, what I think is crazy is, you know, you, we're sitting here 16 years on yeah. from the release of the first one. Mm. And the new one, Rise of the Foot Soldier Vengeance, is, it, it, it was released theatrically in September. Amazing. Um, when people watch this, it will probably have already been out on DVD and Blu-ray yeah. and pay-per-view and, and all that stuff. And, um, you know, it's, it's funny, you know, if you'd have said to me 16 years ago, there's going to be six of these and a computer game yeah. and merchandise and this and that. I'd be just like, what? And I mean, we're now talking about number seven. Yeah, so. it's mad, isn't it? <laughs> but it's good. I mean, look, the other day, they've got, it's the big British, one of the biggest, one of the biggest British franchises, or if not the biggest, no? Yeah. It's, the, it's, the, it's the biggest British true crime film franchise. I mean, that's, um, in, that's incredible. Because there isn't another one, so... It's incredible. And people, listen, you, you go, you're always going to get people saying, oh, they're shit, they're good. But you, you get negative comments and good comments of anything that you do. Anyone, always going to be someone out. But the, I think the films are fantastic. The I think the franchise the pe- is good. The people who normally troll the films or don't like the films, right? You know, I kind of get, you know, like I remember when we were doing, when we was doing Origins, right? And yeah. uh, you're like going, well, we're going to do a prequel to a film that's, you know, 15 years old. Yeah. It's a little bit weird. You yeah. know, I play somebody 15 years younger. How am I yeah. going to do that unless I'm going to have some Botox? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so it, you know, it's crazy. But I think what the Foot Soldier universe has basically enabled people to do, people can die, people can come back, people can do spin-offs, people can do prequels. And I think, you know, if you talk to people, you know, there's more people. Yeah, when you look online, I always think it's funny, like you think there's real hate for this movie, yeah. right? But then when you go out, all you do is get love, right? 100%, and I yeah. just think there's just probably three or 400 f***ing trolls that have got nothing better to yeah. do. They're probably spending their lives, you know, just trolling people. You're fat, you're ugly. Yeah, you're yeah of that. course. Ah, this is shit. But as soon as anything goes out on Amazon or IMDb, yeah. they're the ones doing the one-star reviews. They're the ones saying it's shit. The director's shit. The actors are shit. The script's shit. Yeah. It's shit. And you just think, the time you're wasting doing yeah. this, do something fucking positive. I know, you know I know. Like, get a life, do you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. Um, I, hate, I mean, <laughs> you're, like, you're, like, you're, like, you're going to get negative comments of anything you do, you know, but, you know, I just, I never pay attention to shit like that. Like I said, I don't deal with negativity very well. I don't like it. If I see anything on my Instagram or any of my socials or, but like, you, you know, people say, oh, oh, you know, like you see, like, you see people say, oh, not another foot soldier. Well, have you seen this one yet? It's actually what I, do, what I do is is I either go, don't fucking watch it then, yeah. or I just go, don't worry, there's going to be another 10. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> probably, probably wind them up. Yeah, exactly. But, but, no, but you know, it's like, what, why waste your fucking life in People posting do. that comment? Keep off fucking like worries, don't watch they? it. I know. You but, know but they do it, watch it. People watch them. Of course they do. I mean, it's like, you know, uh, we had Bernard Mahoney on, on this uh, yeah. podcast, and, um, you know, the, the amount of people that, kicked off and was moaning and this yeah and I see bits of that and you just think well you know um, he's, he's a Marmite character but, but at the end yeah. of the day you know has he done everything you know that he says he's done I don't know but he's yeah. definitely done some of it yeah but he's definitely been around he's definitely been on the door he's definitely yeah. you know been in the art he's definitely done stuff yeah I think in life right and, and somebody said this to me the other day and I love this saying yeah they said there's your truth there's your truth and then there's the truth. Yeah, right? so, true. So, you know, the person who's, if we're having a conversation now, you'll have your version of events, yeah. I have my version of events, the real, real version of events are there. Yeah. But everybody sees it through a different prism. And, and yeah, of course. I, 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 I sort of, you know, I watch loads of films and I think anybody who can actually get the money together and yeah. make a film, even if it ain't the best film in the world. Still a big fan. You have to, to give them a pat on the back and you have to say, do you know what? Well done for making a film, getting it out there. And, yeah. and people, I think the, the problem with film critics and a lot of people that are, you know, consumers of this content, yeah. they, they judge it. They look at a 300 million pound film, yeah. the movie stars in, they look at a little million, million two, million five, whatever it is, film, yeah. and go, oh, well, I ain't f-ing as good as that, is it? Well, of course it's not going to be as good as that because you don't have fucking free yeah, money I know. to spend on it. Yeah. But but the thing is, you know, with the critics, you know, I, I understand they have to be critical, but they should also go, do you know what, for the money that's spent on this film, it doesn't matter what film, it doesn't have to be Foot Soldier, it could be any film. Yeah. They should judge it on the merit, you know, because, 100%. because independent films, you know, if you look at all the Hollywood directors, whether it's Guy Ritchie, Matthew Vaughan, Quentin Tarantino, 
um, you know, whoever, yeah. right? So many actors, they've all started so they've got with the somewhere. independence. Yeah, but you right? got yeah, but you have the to independent start somewhere. Film, film, film scene, film yeah. uh, market is the breeding ground for talent, for future stars, for future writers, for future directors. And without that, there is nothing. And, 100%. and, I, and I, I've always been a massive supporter of independent films. And I genuinely think that everybody should support independent films. And, you yeah. know, when people go, you know, oh, I've got a fucking dodgy box or I'm going to wait till it comes on fucking Amazon or I'm going to wait yeah. till it comes on Netflix for free. And you, I've, I, I've, I used to get excited about films. Yeah. Um, and I've always been excited about films. But what I don't understand now is people are actually quite happy to wait. Yeah. So they don't have to pay for it. Or oh, they watch weird. it for free. And I, yeah, I, on those dodgy sites or them fire sticks. And, and I, don't, yeah. I, I genuinely don't get that. And it, yeah. it does sort of annoy me. Well, you know, the um, what I was going to say is that um, people... Uh, People do. I mean, I know, I I know people that have got these fire sticks and stuff. And they're like, I'm like, you know, and they're and they're big fans of of the Foot Soldier, uh, and other films as well. But you know, they um, I can I say, oh, have you seen my film yet? I've seen any Foot Soldiers. Oh, you know, oh, and it does annoy me a little bit because it's like they they say, oh yeah, I watched. You know, like most people I've, I know, my friends who've seen the third one, it's either or they've watched it on Sky. Or back in the day when it got released on like a dodgy thing, I'm like, yeah, I'd just wait for it to come out. I'm like, why don't you go and support your mate or yeah. go and support your friends or the British film industry? You know, we're British, you know what I mean? But it's, but you know, most times out of 10, I mean, I'm I'm guilty of it. Not doing, I don't do it, well, especially like because of my dad. I can't download illegal copies because my dad will just fucking shoot me. You know what I mean? It's a big thing. It's a big you no. Michael Myers in your Yeah, ass. yeah it's a big no no, <laughs> especially he's in the film industry. So he's very set in his ways. You know, you don't do that. You don't copy films and watch it on a shit, sh shit site. You, you know, you go and pay for it or you go and watch it how people you should do really yeah. um, but I, I mean I'm guilty of that I see, you know if I see big films I won't um, legally download because I just don't know how to anyway and I shouldn't and I can't um, and um, but yeah I'll wait for films to come out on Sky if it's on Sky then it's a different platform I'm not doing it illegally I'm, I'm buying it or renting it but you know I think everyone should do that really but you know people don't want to spend money anymore yeah. and that, that's part of it I mean I know my mates will go well, why would I spend you know 15, 20 quid go to the cinema when I can get it for free yeah. I understand what they're saying, yeah. but it's still, it don't sit well with me. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. So, but, uh, so for all those people watching this that do this, um, do it to all the other films apart from their films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> watch all the other films on Pirate. Uh, but when you watch anything that we're in, yeah, you got to pay. You got to Just pay. make sure you pay. Yeah. So find out where you live. <laughs> Obviously, we did Rise of the Foot Soldier, Pat Tate story. Yeah. One prostitute, two prostitute, three prostitute. Yeah. Um, viral, we, we, had, we had a great time in my bar. We had a yeah. great time here. Um, you know, great movie. Um, and and then after that, I don't know what you did for a year or so, but I remember speaking to you about Once Upon a Time in London. Yes. Um, Moisha. And and and, and I, I and it was actually quite funny because at the time um, when we were casting that film. Uh, and for those that haven't seen Once Upon a Time in London, it's basically period crime, true story about Billy O and Jack Spot, who were the original gangsters in London, uh, both Jewish gangsters. Um, and, you know, they were, you know, the setup for the crazy Richardsons. I mean, all these crime families today, I mean, that was the beginning, yeah. wasn't it? There was them, there was the Sabinis, there was all these characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and you sort of just look at it, you go, wow, you know, um, and I remember ringing you and saying, oh, Josh, you know, do you fancy be play, do you playing Moisha Blue Ball? Yeah. And you were like, F I remember yeah, that story. I remember, yeah, Because I remember reading the book about it way before you even spoke about it. What book was that? Was uh, I think it was called A Man of a Thousand Cuts. Jack Spot. Hit him hard, Jack Spot. I've, I've not read that book, but somebody told Very me that good. was a really good book. Really good really book. Because there, that that, there was that one. And then I think Wendy Clarkson wrote a book, didn't he, about... Jack Sport, you wrote a book about Billy Hill, and I think there's a few books about subject yeah, matter. So anyone yeah. who wants to, you know, read a book about it, yeah. I think all the books are, are pretty yeah. good. Well, um, I liked it as well, obviously, because you know, being Jewish myself, and he was a Jew, and he oh, was so a, not Bulgarian then. No, 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 no. no I'm, I could be. <laughs> I, I don't know anymore, tell. Oh, right. <laughs> but I know, it's not be anything you want me to be, mate. Um, who would you pay me? Um, yeah, no. I, I remember reading about that book, and I just thought, wow, what a great film that would be. And then obviously we spoke about it, and you said you're doing a film about it, and then you rang me about it. I was like, fucking hell, yeah. So yeah. What was your? What was your? your to tell us some stories about that, and you know, it was, it was a great time because we also did that. It was that, fun, wasn't it? That year we did uh, Marbella as well. Yes, we did. Yeah, so we did two was, movies together. Yeah, we had, yeah, yeah. Rise of Foot Soldier, Marbella. Yeah, it was good. It was good fun. I, I think. I think. Um, 
I like to play a moisture blue ball. I just, you know, what I loved about that film is part uh, is 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 the the clobber what we wore, yes. the clothes, the old school, the old school stuff. I loved that. I thought that was really good. I just, it was just great being on set every day. You know, it was just it was fun. We did some fun stuff, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Once, but if you haven't seen Once Upon a Lime, Once Upon a Time in London, go get watch it. Easy for you to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I put my fucking teeth back in. Um, and then, and then, uh, have, you, have you got any any fun memories of that? Was there just working with you, Tell? Oh. That was the best. No, um, I think you had hair then. I did. You had hair, didn't you? No, because it. You I had just, hair then. This will make you laugh, right? So um, I still have hair. Not now. a lot of it, but you I still have hair now. But on your what, eyebrows. What happened? What, <laughs> yeah. But what happened was, um, when I turned forty, my hair went grey. Yeah. And then it started to recede, and I literally remember going to the, the, the hairdressers once a month, and you're sitting there for like three hours with all the fuck hair dye on, oh. and I'm sitting there thinking, I don't actually give a fuck about yeah. my hair. I really don't give a fuck about it. And that was the last film I did with hair. What, what, what's my time in London? Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? It's all coming off now. Do it. Um, it does suit yeah. you. are very lucky. Yeah. Well, a lot of people said that. A lot of people said... You're lucky. A lot of people can be bald and they look like a fucking lunatic. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going to think, fuck, <laughs> now looks like he wants to kill me. But you look good. Oh, thank you, darling. You're welcome. Um, and then, obviously, after that, we did um, uh, Rise of the Foot Soldier, my buyer. Yes, we did. That was fun. Kenny Boy's back in action. Yeah. I only had a little part in that one, didn't I? I didn't. I only had a little part in that because I don't think I was even going to be in that one, was I? And then they, they, they were like, "Oh no, we need Kenny for this scene." Because I was only in a couple of scenes, wasn't I? Yeah, I, I can't remember. Yeah, Cause, cause it was, after that it was Origins. I got my big part again. Right, 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 right. Okay. So Mark Bale was. I only, I only did a couple of scenes with. I think. I don't think I remember the scene with you. We just did it with Craig. So what was your? What was your funny? You must have some funny memories of my Mar, Mark Bale. There must be. Well, when I was waiting, in, working on Pat Day story. Yeah. Fuck no. I mean, it, I mean, Loads, just man. I mean, there was there was one in, 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 there was one um, I think moment when I was we was working me and Craig were working together on the bar scene where we've just done a pill. Oh, I'll tell you it was great fun. It was when I did the scene on the beach. It's like you're filming on the beach and like another take. Yeah, like, yeah, do as many as you want. We don't care. Got the sun, sea, doing what you know. And we had to pretend to take an e pill and then oh, we get yeah. fucked up. Yeah. And we were just that was my probably the, like the best moment. Like it was just fun. Uh, but I think funny wise, cracking up was obviously when um, when we was in the bar and uh, they were like, "Oh, should we actually get you some real drinks to go with the scene a little bit?" Because we meant to be a couple of pills in now, be a bit fucked, and then we're meeting brasses and taking them back to the hotel and smashing them in. That's when they. Are you talking about real life or the film? No, this was yesterday. <laughs> Oh, did you want to talk about the film? <laughs> yeah, so we talked about the oh, film. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, um, that was, it was not yesterday. Uh, yes, that was the film. So that was we, last week. That was last yeah. week, yeah, yeah, last week, yeah. I thought you said what happened last week. Yeah. I don't know, I must have got Yes, yeah, so that was fun, drink like, because you don't really like, you never really drink or do anything on a film set, but obviously like we, we were just like, oh, we'll have a couple just to get a bit merry because we wanted to get into the character a bit more, a bit more method. So we did that and that was just a fucking laugh. Me and Craig just fucking cracking up at each other, laughing, walking down the bloody Marbella High Street with like my short, and oh, just fuck. that fate you were an advert for Fela. That was yeah, good, yeah, good yeah. Thing, being yeah. on the boat as well when we did the yacht scene. When like, um, you know, he says, Oh, you've done like 10 lines in four minutes or something like that. <laughs> like, it's just all, just all fun, man. Just banter. The whole, everything was good. Working with everyone's great, man. There's not there's not one person on the cast or even on the crew that I think I don't want to work with them again. Yeah. I love everyone, man. It's great. I mean, I mean, it is like a family, <clears> yeah, yeah. Of course, it is, family. man. Yeah, and then obviously, um, the pandemic happens, yes. Talk to me about that. Because did you have your daughter in the pandemic or was it before? No, it's before. Right. I had my daughter before. Let's talk about your daughter because cause, yeah. cause you obviously um, yeah. had, had a serious girlfriend at the time. Yes, I did. Um, was you engaged or? No, 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 no. I'm not, I wasn't engaged, thank f for that. Yeah, I had a before, when was it? Well, she's six next month, so six years ago now. I had a, but yeah, no. Yeah, it, so it was, it, was, it was probably when we were filming Once Upon a Time in London and, and my bear. I think you're correct in saying that. Yeah, my daughter's doing amazing. She's doing really well. I mean, let's talk about, about your daughter. Cause I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, your daughter, um, you know, they always say when you have a girl, yeah. she's a daddy's girl. 100%. Um, and, yeah. and obviously, you, I know you've had some, some traumatic times with, of course, yeah. with the mother yeah. and, and obviously over your daughter. I mean, do you want yeah. to talk about that? Or, sure, yeah. I, I mean, mean you know, so I, I won't go too much into the past of me and my ex and stuff but you know my uh everything is now amazing that's what i'm saying like negative stuff in it do you know what i mean like someone who suffers with depression the shit that i went through with uh with like 
my ex and finding out what she was doing behind my back and what she does, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, you know, I, I'm, I'm there for my daughter all the time now. Um, so also share about your daughter, because your daughter was yeah, born yeah. with a disability as yeah, well. Yeah, my, bo- my daughter was born uh, with a disability, yeah. So my daughter was born without any sight, she was, so she's born fully blind. She's got no light perception, my daughter. Did you know that when she was born, Josh? No, we didn't know that at first. It was just like, I think she was a month or something old like that. It was actually my mum who realised. She said There's, her eyes don't seem a bit, seem a bit like movie. They're like, that's right, where they're moving a bit. And uh, but yeah, we just went to a specialist and they just said, yeah, we're really sorry that your daughter's blind. She's got no light perception. She's blind. They did tests and she's got nerve damage and stuff like that. So it was... It was hard, especially for me. I suffer with depression. Do you know what I mean? So I mean, I mean, it's a killer. Uh, as 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 a as a as a as a, as a father, yeah. And as a man that <clears throat> obviously wanted to have that little girl. Yeah, of course. How did, how did you cope with that, Josh? Because that must have been hard. Um, I didn't cope very well. Right. At all. Uh, at that time as well, I was going through a shit relationship, toxic. Right. But obviously, I wanted to do everything I could and be there for my daughter because she's my world. But yeah, obviously, finding out that my daughter was blind killed me. Absolutely, just it destroyed me, literally. You know, all these things would go through my head, like, oh, she's never going to see my face. She's never going to see certain things. She's never going to see the sky. All these little things we take for granted. You know, my, you know, she, but, you know, in a way, I know it's cruel to say, I mean, it upsets me every day, but I see my daughter and she's always singing. She's always happy. She's dancing. But you know something? That's one thing that... Um, if she's happy, I'm happy. But that's, that's, one, the main that's thing. one thing that a lot of people, you know, you get sympathy from people. People go, oh, yeah. I couldn't imagine if that was my son or daughter. I can't imagine how you cope with that. But to her, yeah. she's not known anything different. That's what I was going to so say. that's why she's yeah. happy, because yeah. this is a reality, you know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I yeah. Think, and I think, you know... Uh, like you said, people do take things for granted. People take for granted getting up in the morning and actually walking around. Right? Yeah. You know, they're lucky they've woken up. Can, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Hundred percent, mate. Um, well, when I see my when I see my when I see my daughter now, you know, like she's just she's doing so well. She's excelling at school. Um, she's got one to one who walks around and, take, and looks after her twenty four seven at school. Um, but yeah, she's just doing really well. You know, is there any? Because uh, I know that there's uh, been some research um, in a stem cell therapy and different things, which some people. Yeah, have been able to partially regain some sight or full yeah. sight. Yeah. Is, is is she able to have any treatment like that or not? Uh, at, at the moment, for what she's got, there's no cure for what she's got. But they did say that she was born in the right era, right. Uh, and that fingers crossed in her lifetime there could be there could be something they can do. There's not a yes yet because wow. uh, you know there's um, I can't remember the exact name what it's called because I'll probably. Up, but yeah, it's, it's nerve damage and uh, all that stuff in her eyes and stuff. So they can't really cure that at the moment. But they did say that she's born in the right era, and there's so much amazing stuff out there that they can do. Look, technology and and medicine changes daily. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, so you might, you never know. You might, you she might actually be out. Listen, it's, it's my yeah, it's my absolute know. dream tell to have my daughter just see her own dad's face. For sake, you know what I mean? That's just just her look at me and go, Daddy. You know what I mean? There's just but you know, at the moment you can't. And but in the, the day, it, yeah, it does. It still gets me down. Uh, but I'm in such a good place physically and mentally at the moment. I don't let it get to me as much as it did. Yeah. Because you know, my therapist says, look, you can't change it. You can't do anything about it. Right. Fucking basically, just put up with it because you have to be there for your daughter. Do everything you can for her. Make sure she has the best life. And trust me, I am. Um, and she's doing amazing. She's proper daddy's little girl. Well, and I genuinely think in life, um, you know, lots of people complain about their situation, whether they've lost a job, they've lost someone in their family, or, or somebody's been born with, with an issue, or, yeah, there's, there's always, I don't know anybody genuinely who goes through life and has no problems. Right? Yeah, I mean, if you and are, I think, it's and lucky. I, I know some people go, oh, well, they're, it's right for them, they're lucky. Yeah. But genuinely, I think everybody has some trauma or some issue to deal sure. with. And I think and I think what your therapist said is actually great advice to anybody listening and watching this. Yeah. You know, if there, if there's something you can change, change it. Yeah. If there isn't, you just have to accept it. And yeah. you have to do whatever like you said, you work with it every day. You know, you yeah. see your daughter and, and you want her to be able to see yeah. the sky, you, but you can't do anything about it. So Not so sure all you can do is what you're doing. Yeah. And I exactly. think lots of people that will be um, watching this or listening, this probably won't know so about your daughter. Yeah, and I think it's good to share it because it 100%, gives people yeah. hope. Because people then sort of go, well, actually, I thought 
what I was going through was shit. Yeah. But it ain't that shit. Do you know what yeah, I mean? There's 100%. always someone better than you and it's always, always someone, someone worse. worse. Yeah, yeah. Do you know I mean, mean, do you know what? You know, you've hit the nail on the head there, Tell, is that my friend said to me the other day, he said, well, at least you're not going to hospital to see her every day and she's on life support. Yeah. Or, or at least she's not dying of cancer. You know, I know it's a very morbid conversation, but, I, you know, you see all these adverts on TV, you see children in hospice, you know, in a hospice, four or five years old, dying of leukaemia. I mean, the last... And you think, you're not, you're not that parent. You're, you can see her every day. She's alive, she's kicking, she's doing really well. Yes, yeah, she can't see. And it is very fucking hurtful. And it, it brings me to tears sometimes when I see her. But she's, if she was here now, she's, like, happy. She's singing, she's dancing. She's, I know she can't see, but like you said, another massive thing is that she doesn't know no different. She was born without sight, so she's, that, she adapts to it. Do you know what I mean? So I'm glad that she didn't have sight and then it got taken away from her. So I'm, in, in, in a way, I'm, <clears throat> I'm glad that it's how it, it's come, it's happened like that, yeah. so. In the last three weeks, I've had people contacting me on social media um, about young children, and I'm talking seven, eight years old, having life-saving cancer treatment. And, and that breaks my heart, you know, when Terrible. you see uh, that happening to kids, you know. And, I know. Uh, you I know, know, it's... it's I've, all, I've always done uh, a lot of work for children's charities because I've always yeah. wanted to, to help where you can. Sure, yeah, of course. Um, and also cancer is a big thing for me as well because mm. I have lost quite a few people from that. Sure, um, wouldn't it? But, but, you know, if... if does, your, does, your, does your daughter get any help from any sort of charities for...? for... Uh, so, uh, at the moment, there's not... I mean, yeah, obviously the, uh, the government, they give her a disability allowance and, they, uh, like, for example, we got a walk-in shower built in for her the other day obviously she's getting heavy now to so start lifting up and putting in the bath but she can do it herself but for walking showers is sort of easier so they pay for that um we just got a gate out of the back um i mean she's never in the garden on her own but i mean like the only reason i'm asking josh i just thought if anyone's watching this and they wanted to donate any money to a blind charity if you have yeah, one yeah yeah i mean i mean I, I, uh, uh, I mean i'd say if to do anything is to, to dedicate or put money into moorfields hospital because they are incredible i think oh, they must have a charity moorfields i'm sure they do but yeah, yeah but i mean if uh, moorfields are just incredible what they do for my daughter what the checkups they do it's an incredible hospital uh yeah moorfields is great uh, it's one of the top hospitals in the world uh also got you know I, I i i wanted to i'm going to try um and come i'd like to become an ambassador for guide dogs yeah um something like that and then um yeah just just you know not necessarily just help children or anyone that are, are blind but just help people you know and kids mainly I, you're, you're the best person that. for that because you live live with it and you've yeah. you've had to deal with the challenges and, and adapt your life around what she's of course experiencing. I 100%, think that, mate, yeah. that having that and then and then being able to then share that with other people and add some value, I think that's an amazing yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like like you said, I mean, a lot. There's a lot of people out there a lot worse off than me, yeah. who you know lo lost their kid. A kid's dying. Of this. They're in hospital in a hospital. I do think about that stuff, and it's very sad. No one wants to no one wants to bury their kid. You know, God forbid. But I look at my daughter and I think, look, you're breathing, you're healthy, you're happy. Life is good. She's excelling in life and doing really well. I can't, I really can't complain about that at the moment. So I've just got to stay strong, stay focused and stay positive in my life, especially towards my daughter, you know? So what else do you do on the side, Josh, when, when you're not, uh, you're so not acting? So when I'm not acting, I, I'm a barber. I cut hair. Yeah. So I've, anybody wants to get their barnet trimmed, where do yeah, they go? They just uh, message me on, DM me on Instagram. Right. Because I ain't giving you my number. Josh uh, Myers, mobile hairdressing service. Yeah, no, I, he um, comes to you. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. Is that um, when I was younger, my dad was just like, look, your acting might, ever, might never get to the stage you want to get to. So you've got to have something to fall back on. So I just did a barbering course. I was always good with my hands. So I did a barbering course. So you are the Edward Scissorhands of North London. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. I think it's around. good though, because lots of people, again, that are watching this. Yeah, especially um, up and coming actors, you yeah, know. And listening to this, will go... I just want to be an actor. I don't want to. I don't want to plan B. Yeah. I just want to focus on acting. But the reality is, ninety-five percent of all actors are unemployed. Yeah. And obviously, you could have a part in a movie. You could be the lead. It's not coming yeah. out for a year. Yeah. So what well, are you going to that, do? That's, that's exactly it. So, I, I would say to anybody watching this, um, if you're an actor or, or you know whatever, always have something to fall back on. You always got to have something. Uh, you know, always got to have a, a, loads of other strings to your bow. You have you know a reason I mean? to get up in the morning, right? Hundred percent. You know, if you're just you know like you know. Uh, uh, you know, we did uh, Vengeance, and after Vengeance, we did a horror film. But the last couple of months, I've not done anything apart from, we, you know, we'll get to the tour thing that we're doing, but I'm, I've got bits and bobs, pardon me, for next year and towards the end right. of the year, fingers crossed. But in that 
couple of months gap, I don't just sit around and do nothing. Yeah. I'll drive, drive me mad. So I'm cutting hair two or three times a week. I'm going to the gym. I'm keeping active, being with my daughter. I'm always doing something. But, but I think that's the best advice. 100%. Be busy. Be busy. And if you're not busy, yeah. then you can drive yourself mad. 100%. And I also think if, you've, if you're, especially an up-and-coming actor or an actor, yes, you may be going to drama school, fit school and pursuing that career, but always have something in the background that you can always earn money. Yeah. Uh, I always have like something you can fall back on that if it really didn't work. Get a, le get a legal side hustle. <laughs> a legal, yeah, not illegal, legal side hustle. Um, and and uh, so, yeah, thank you for sharing that with us. And obviously we then fast forward to the pandemic. Mm. Uh, how was the pandemic for you, Josh? It was all right, not great. It didn't, it, it, it fucked up my mental health of quite a bit, my depression, because you're stuck indoors, isn't you? You can't really go anywhere. Right. Maybe, you know, I'd try and go for a jog in the morning, because I think you was let out like, an hour a day, weren't you? Like fucking cage animals. I think you was allowed out, but I don't think you, you, you know, you, you, you weren't allowed to mingle, were you? Yeah, Unless I mean. you had a reason to go. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was, it was horrible. And also as well, like the first lockdown, um, which just wasn't great for my depression. It, it didn't really f me up. Um, Yes, it was just it was just mad. But I think it was I think it was just because How'd you get how'd you spend your day? Was you playing Connect Four with yourself or solitaire? Oh no, I was playing myself. <laughs> what? I wasn't, play, I wasn't playing Connect Four. <laughs> playing myself as much as I could. Now I um I just I just try to stick to a routine, get up, right. eat breakfast, play yourself, play myself many times, go to the gym. No, you couldn't go to the gym, could you? I had to work out at home. I had oh, to right. I had to do a lot of work at home. Um, just yeah, it was it was hard. I didn't like it. <sighs> I tell you what was what 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 the highlight for me of the pandemic was. Uh, I did an audio book, so wow. I, I was sitting here in April and I was thinking, can't do anything, can't go anywhere. We're yeah. developing all this content. Will we make it? Will we not make it? Will the cinemas reopen? Yeah. Are we all going to die? Who knows? Right? Yeah. And uh, I just thought, you know what? Everyone kept saying I should never write my audio book, so. Yeah. And I made more of that book, King of Clubs, which was about yeah, clubs. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then I think it was like a month after that, I got a phone call from Andy saying, um, we're going to do an origin story. We're going to do a Tony Tuck story. And I was yeah. like, that's fucking cool. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. you've got to play yourself 16 years younger. Yeah. So we had a bit of a laugh about it. But then you got the call. Yeah. And what was great is when we got that call and we knew actually yeah. this is going to happen at some point this year. Yeah, yeah. I think it gives us all something to look forward to. But it boosts the morale, innit? Um, and I remember, like, literally, I think it was, I think it was June or July, but things started opening up again. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, we're going to, I can't remember, because it, it feels like 20 years ago. Yeah. But we was at this stage, now we're going at this stage, and you don't have to do this. And, and they yeah. felt, oh, well, maybe we're going back to normal. And then I remember, literally, getting in the gym, and I was like, fucking really really put my and soul into that film I'm yeah just, you did you a, smashed you done very it was, well it was an odd film like no, to, yeah, I, to, I was to, very to proud of you on that film oh, i love you thank you i, Josh, think, you did, I think you did great man um and i remember getting in south end checking in that hotel seeing your face yeah seeing craig's face seeing uh vinnie jones it was just like yeah, we're, it was all just here, fun, it? we're all doing this movie and it was it was it was quite daunting for me because it was the first time i'd ever played a role like that um big lead and, wasn't and, it? and 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 but what i loved about it was the fact that we were, we were all in their bubble. Yeah, of course, yeah. And it was like, literally, we're not going home till we finish this. Yeah. And and uh, I used to, like you, have a routine, get up in the morning, go to the gym, and then obviously I shut the gyms again. We was in another lockdown. Yeah. And I remember, like, f being in this, like, nice hotel in South End with you guys and thinking, for fuck's sake, we're back where we were I mean, six months ago. Yeah. But then I thought, you know what? I'm fucking working. I'm yeah. with 100 of my mates and we yeah. did have a fucking laugh didn't yeah exactly oh proper I mean, laugh I mean I remember that was when we did the Josh Myers challenge oh no <laughs> oh that was horrible um, it's only you that makes me do that and for that and for those of you that don't know what the Josh Myers challenge is it's on Instagram we was we was there's this lovely Indian family yeah. who, who owned the uh, the Seven Hotel the Seven Hotel in South End, and they looked after us and I felt like I'd become part of their family yeah they were good, and, good people uh, we had this private dining room at the back of the hotel where we had like some great gatherings. And on one night, the guy come round and I don't know who come up with the Josh Myers challenge. It could have been me. I'm pretty Andy. sure it was you. <laughs> pretty sure you're the one who tried to find out. <laughs> what was the first thing I took? Do you know, oh, was it on it, the fish head? No, so, so what it was, there was, there was some, some fish on the table. That was disgusting. So there was a fish head and I think a towel and Josh ate the fish head and towel 
Um, so he, par he passed part one of the Josh oh, Myers challenge. That's terrible, wasn't it? But then it went on from there. Yeah, every time we meet up, we have to do a challenge. But I know, but it went on because I don't know if you remember. We said, "Oh, have you got anything really fucking hot?" And they went, "We do." Oh yeah, and I drank it, um, didn't I? And I can't remember what it was, but they made you a cocktail with like some Naga chili or what they call Reaper chilies. It was like Fuck really me bad. Up. And and I remember you <laughs> knocking his thing back. <laughs> Oh, you're like when a dog's going to be sick there. <laughs> Not salivating, am I? I was like, I didn't even ask you. You just go, do it, do it, drink it, just drink it. And I drank it. I was like, oh, what was this? <laughs> but but, but you, you wasn't sick. I wasn't you sick. sick. You did well. No, in you my passed, head I was. You passed yeah. the Josh Myers challenge. Thank you very much. And I think we have done it again. We, we've done two now. Yeah, we've done two. We've got to keep going, yeah. We've got to do the third one. But we've got to be, be on another movie. Yeah, once we're every movie one, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll, I'll, I'm up for that. Yeah, good but idea. But what was your... Give us some stories from Origins, because that was a great film. It's a fun... Um, I think one of the funniest ones was when we was in that car park and blew the car up. Oh, f***ing hell. Right, so we're, we're in this car park in South End and we blew the car park up. Sorry, we did, we almost blew the car park up because the car went up and... and uh, the, the, it was like a door a sunroof a sunroof the and sunroof. it went across and it literally missed just missed yeah. I mean it was literally that that fucking far yeah. away from actually ironing someone out yeah oh yeah, it was, yeah. I well, mean yeah. We, were, we were lucky the car blew up when it was a was it old school mert wasn't it the car blew up bang It was. A, I think they put too much explosives in they must have and the fucking car just went boom and this I didn't even know I was looking at the car like that and they all was like move 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 we obviously were Quite well, we were good like 50 feet back, weren't we, or more? It was because obviously safety first. And we just go, and the fucking sunroof is like on fire, like 100 feet in the air, just flying down towards the crowd. Yeah. And it just missed me about, about that much. I was right next to George <laughs> Russo, and he pushed me out of the way, and this and that. I was fucking hell. Thank that. God nobody got injured on that. Yeah, but, I know, that was um, mental. But we were insured so. anyway, but. Yeah, if you would have got ironed out, we would have just yeah. left you there, but we would have got money paid out, been sweet. Yeah. Your families would have been okay. Um, yeah, I'll pay you out, don't I? But the. <laughs> But I, th I think another funny story was, I don't know if you remember when we was doing that thing with Vinny outside the club and he comes out and he hits me. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. For those oh yeah, I do remember yeah, when you fell and there was no mat. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and just for those people watching and listening at home, <laughs> there's normally a crash mat, right? Oh, and then what they do is they edit it out. Yeah. And obviously if you actually get knocks on your ass and you bounce on a concrete, it fucking hurts. Yes, it does right? hurt. And this fucking div mo moved the <laughs> crash mat out of the way and he's hit me and I've just gone straight on my ass and I've like dancing on the concrete. Yeah, and I was you like, fell straight on the yeah. And I was worried because, you we know, We tried like, to stop you, but you just fell straight back. You know, like at the bottom of your spine, the, the coccyx. coccyx bone, I yeah. actually thought, I'm going to have a broken <laughs> coccyx here. I broke your ass. I'm going to be in a fucking A&E in <laughs> COVID. I don't want to pee. Yeah, 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 I broke my ass. I've got up and everyone's going, are you okay? Are you okay? I'm like, yeah. Fine. Yeah, and then after you're crying like a little <laughs> girl. <laughs> oh, my bum. Oh, my God. But, but it was fun. So that many... was, I was crying. But but I was was... Actually going, I'm so sorry to tell you. I'm glad you thought it was fun anyway. I thought it was hilarious. Because <laughs> I tried to stop you. Like, you couldn't see there was no mat there. And I could see there was no mat. And I was thinking, he must know there's no mat here because he's about to come out here and we're rehearsing and he's going to punch him. He's going to fall back. Hopefully he just stepped back for you proper went. <laughs> oh, shit. In fun times, that was. That was great. Yeah, I mean, it can was. You, can you, I'm, I'm trying to think of some other funny stories about Origins because there was some funny, funny things, weren't there? Oh, oh yeah, no. What well, I think every day was funny for me. There wasn't a day that goes by I didn't have right. stitches right. in my stomach. And the premiere, the premiere of that was good as well, wasn't it? Leicester Square. I mean, yeah, that was great. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was, I mean, it, I, yeah, it was really good. I think you was you was great in that film, mate. You oh, was thanks. really, really good. Thanks. Well, listen, we I, th I think we we definitely. Have, have done some great work together. 100%, and we've yeah. We've been in some good movies. You know, yeah, we have done some good We talk yeah. about, once upon a time in London, you talk about Foot Soldier 3, 4 and 5. Yeah. And obviously the new one, 6. Yeah. They're all good movies. Very good films. Um, I, think, I think the funniest thing, when I come on Rise of the Foot Soldier Vengeance, when obviously I'm not in this one, but yeah. involved in it on the production side. But yeah. I remember I come on set the day you were getting fucking ironed out. And, oh, uh, oh, yeah, you did, yeah, yeah. And yeah. what was funny, Ben was there and... Uh, and 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 after you died, I said, "Oh Ben, you got to do the South Park thing." Oh my God! Who killed Kenny? Kenny? Yeah, I remember that. And Nick yeah. came up going, "Tell you can't put it on social media. Yeah. You're gonna fucking the film. It's a spoiler." And he had like <laughs> it's fucking huge, like black. I said, "Mate, I'm not gonna post it till after the film comes out." Yeah, Don't worry. yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. I mean, he gets so proud of Nick. Oh. But I do love him. I think what he did with Origins, I mean, he upped the bar, and I think what he yeah. did with Vengeance again. 
completely different movie to Origins, but yeah. I think Nick as a director is phenomenal. I think he's, he's yeah. You know good. what? I'm glad you touched on that. You know, not only is Nick a very good friend of mine, but he's 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 just fantastic. He really is good. You know, I'm not just playing stomach up his ass because he's my mate. He's fucking great at what he does. Really good director. As you can see, Origins is fantastic. Vengeance is amazing. You know, and you got to see what he does next. I mean, I know yeah. he's talking about headhunters and yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I, I think whatever I think whatever Nick's done, whatever Nick does is going to be fantastic because he, you know what I love about Nick is that he puts his heart and soul into every fucking not the film, every fucking scene. It's perfection. Yeah, yeah, he's fucking great, Absolutely and he cares. Fantastic. Yeah, and, and, he cares. And, and, and you know, some people don't like that hands-on, aggressive like. This is what I want you to do while yeah. directing, but I loved it because oh, I because yeah. I think as an actor. You can do your work. You can come on set and think how you're going to do different things. Yeah. But if somebody actually comes up to you and goes, that was good, but this is fucking better. Yeah. And you do it and you go, fucking hell, thank you. Yeah, right? 100%. Because you want, as an actor, you want to be good. You want to perform. Yeah, 100%. You want people to fucking, I want to be told if I'm do, not doing something right, yeah. or if I pick something up or look somewhere or yeah. deliver something differently, yeah. I'd much rather fucking be doing that than, yeah. than just do it and then, Looking at it, well, that, well, directors have got that monitor, haven't they? Or the monitor, they can see what you're, what you can't see. So you may think you do it well, and they go, you know, well, when you did this, you did that. And when I'm watching this, I would rather you did that. So you know, yeah. And Nick, you know, would tell me straight up, you know, do this, do it like that. Don't shout on this bit. Be a bit softer with your voice and be a bit more menacing. Make sure you, you play this one really camp, Josh. Yeah, he, he has seen it a few times. <laughs> um, um, and. Uh, and that, what was the horror film you did after? That's a film called Death Do Us Apart. Uh, me and Jason Fleming. He's, he's a good he's actor. Great actor. Yeah, yeah, he's a really good actor, Jason. We worked together on that. It's basically, uh, I can't say too much. It's basically just, I'll say it's a comedy horror. Right, okay. It's funny. It's going to be good when it comes out, I hope. No, I'm sure it will be. It will be, because I'm you, in You're it. not in that many bad films, Jason. No, 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 no. no. This We've is all done good. a few bad films in our yeah, lives. Yeah, of course. But, Who hasn't? Um, one of the films that we, uh, that we didn't touch on was Antisocial. Yes. Wow, yeah. And you actually worked with Prince Harry's bird. Yeah, Meghan Markle, yeah. yeah. So we had we had a, me and my friend Sam had a concept for a film, um, approached the director and said Reg uh, done that as well. Reg didn't Reg, he? Reg did do that, he wrote it, yeah. So it was our idea, Reg wrote it, obviously he put a lot of input into it as well. Uh, and there was a yeah antisocial. I mean, it, it should have done a lot better than it did, but you know, we won't go into that one. But yeah, it worked with Meghan Markle, she played my brother's love interest in the film so uh she was in i think suits at the time the shot the tv series in america that was massive as well wasn't it yeah. so again that was a big show yeah suits is massive yeah i mean i never watched it but i know my, my mom and dad loved it blah blah but yeah no yeah i worked with her for about seven eight weeks i worked with her uh, mega markle she was actually nice she was actually cool cool to me right. but yeah and then for, for fast forward years later she's now was it Duchess of Sussex i think or something like that well she's married to Prince Harry now maybe she'd have got some pictures and some videos of her I've got a picture of her. Oh, right. Yeah, I just keep it private. Now, I thought you'd post it on Instagram and said, yeah, it, me with uh, Prince Harry's... Prince Harry's bird. ...wife. <laughs> yeah. Just hanging out. And my mate's actually got a video that I, I... He was a big fan of Suits. He's still got it on his phone with her saying, hi, how are you? This is your, I'm with your best friend, Josh. She's telling me you all love the show. Lots of love. He's still got that, yeah. So he's like, I've actually got that from her. So That's amazing. She's That's cool. Amazing. Um, yeah, so, so he's worked with Meghan Markle. Yeah. He's worked with Craig Fairbrother, he's worked with Two Stone. I mean, you know, who would you like to work with in the future that you haven't worked with? Good question. I would have said Tom Hardy, but I've worked with Tom Hardy. That was cool. Oh, he's a fantastic actor. Who would I like to work with? Um, off the top of my head, I'd say Jason Statham. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon I'm the new Jason Statham. The better looking version. Yeah, obviously. I f <laughs> can hell, mate. I f I'll tell you what, he is um, a phenomenal guy i mean i've, I've met yeah. him and, and and i've got to say like he's so down to earth and he's so like uh, i mean he's just a movie star isn't he? i mean you know yeah. he's, he's he's come from lockstock and he's yeah. he's probably one of the highest paid actors in hollywood now, yeah, yeah he's absolutely smashed but he is absolutely you know i think anybody yeah. who who's in a film with him they're gonna see a massive boost in their career yeah 100 percent. yeah he's uh, he, i think he's really good at his craft and i think he's really good he's and, and what um and and obviously if you Talk, talking about films, what your favourite, and I won't say favourite because I think if when people say what's your favourite gangster film, it's a stupid hard. fucking so many. question because there's not one. Yeah, there's but, so many. But what would you, what would, you, what would you say would your all-time five or ten in no particular order, just the ones that you watched and went, man, I'd love to have been in that. Or that More is like a, it got to be a gangster film. Yeah, 
We're on a crime podcast. We don't want to talk about fucking rom-coms, do we? Oh, I was going to say Shrek, <laughs> Moana, uh, Goodfellas. Goodfellas, yeah. That's got to be number one for me. Scarface. Yeah. I don't know many, to be fair. Good, I just think of Goodfellas, really. That's, that really? was my top. Yeah. Uh, Casino. Yeah. Fucking unbelievable film. That's top three. Uh, I don't know if it's a gangster film. I can't, I can't think of any others. But they are definitely that. that Would you like me to, to help mind. you? Yes, please. Exactly helps you. Well, I'm the pod father, so Gangster I know. number one, I like. I, 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 I know this shit, right? Inside out, right? So, yeah. <laughs> Sexy Beast. Sexy Beast is great. Good Godfather? Yes, all of them. What, even the third one? Yeah. No, I was just the talking third, about the franchise. The third, third one, the third no, one. No, 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 the original was the best one. I watched, I watched the first one, and I thought, wow, that is a great movie. And then yeah. when I watched the second one, when De Niro played yeah. the Godfather, I was just like, oh, my God. I mean, it, it, that, for me, was... I mean, De Niro's done some amazing performances. Oh, incredible. Him playing Martin Brando, oh. I mean, he did it. I mean, you, it was like watching a fucking young Marlon Brando. That's yeah, how good he was. Yeah, he's, he's um, pretty special. And then the third one, I, I, I didn't get that at all. I, 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 I've always thought Francis Ford Coppola is an amazing director. Yeah. And the first two films, they were probably two of the best gang films ever made. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, obviously, when I say ever made, I mean, you know, I put that in the box with Casino, Goodfellas, yeah, 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 Scarface, 100%, of course, Calito's Way. Oh, Calito's Way, great film. Calito, go back up. Yeah. <laughs> Remember me, Benny Blanco from the Bronx? <laughs> See, you remember all this. Yeah, I just, my um, brain was, I kept coming since yeah, 70s, so yeah. I was all kerfuffled. Love on the Bay was another great good one. Great film, yeah, yeah, another yeah, Love on the Bay. Final Cut, did you see that? No, I never saw Final Cut. That was Jude Law's first movie, he was great in that. Jude Law, that was good. Obviously, The Rise of the Foot Soldier franchise. Yeah, they're big gangsters. I mean, there's so many in yeah, there. Yeah, so many, yeah, <laughs> hundred, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you was, obviously, at drama school, and, yeah. you, and you were looking to be an actor did you look at any actors and go i really want to have that guy's career whether it was ray winston or uh, jason statham was there anybody that you looked at growing up and you was like that's what's inspiring me to act other than wanting to do it an actual good question i didn't I, i'll be honest i didn't really have anyone i was just like oh, i want to have his life i want to be like that i just thought i want to be an actor i want to have i want to just i don't really care about I'm not saying I'm famous now. Obviously, we all get recognised in certain places whether for the films that we've done. But I know it comes with the territory. But I just want to wake up every day and be on the film set and be acting. I just that is my life. That's what I want. I know that obviously certain parts of fame and things come with it, but that really don't bother me. I just want to have my life. What are you doing today? I'm on a film set. You know, I'm working. I want to be working all the time. I love I acting. Think, I think when I when I grew up, I think mine was Ray Winston. I really? always. Watched Ray Winston films, and I love Ray Winston as an actor. And I was, but I never wanted to act. I never wanted to yeah. be in movies. You know what I mean? But I got into it by yeah. default, right? By right. somebody saying, "I want you to be in this movie," and that's what got me into it. Yeah. But I'd always, if if you said to me, like, with the music scene, who was your favourite DJs? Yeah. Who was your favourite? You know, who's you? You know, do you like Taylor Swift? Do you yeah. like Sinatra? You know, you have favourite artists that you. Do you like Drake? Yeah. Do you know? Do you like Nines? Yeah, there'd be people that you go. If I like rap music, I'm Fifty Cent, Nines, yeah. Drake. You know, you'll have your list of rap yeah, people of course, you like. Yeah. And in movies, it, for me, it was Ray Winston. And then when I watched Sexy Beast, yeah, it was a Ben Kingsley. And people, oh, he's amazing, out, wasn't he? And people said to me, you know, um, that's such a great movie. And I said, do you know, sir? I said that shows you how good Ray Winston is because if you've got Sir Ben Kingsley calling you a c every day. And you keep a straight face. I mean, you know, it was the funniest film I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And he actually, like, you if, you if you watch Ben Kingsley in, or Sir Ben, as he's called, yeah. in Gandhi or any of his other movies, yeah. and then you see him in that, you just go, my God. I mean, it was like... He's very versatile, wasn't he? He's he was some, so good. He's an amazing so actor. I think, I think he was fantastic in Sexy If you haven't Beast. seen Sexy Beast, it's worth watching it. Just very you good can film, definitely watch hear it. Here's a Ben Kingsley called Ray Winston a yeah, many t <laughs> many times in one scene. No, oh yeah, it was great. Yeah, Sexy Beast is a fantastic film. So, so what's your plans for the future, Josh? Have you got uh, got anything you're working on or anything that's uh, coming I've up? I've got a few. I've got a few films that I've been offered actually for beginning of next year. Uh, hopefully, got some other stuff lined up towards the end of this year. Just got to keep plodding along. Just got to keep going. Just got to get myself out there more. Um, yeah, we're doing our gangster tour. Yep. I'd be looking forward to that. Um, so that's also um, something that's very exciting. Yeah, that, very. Again, uh, 
come out of a friend of mine, Kaz, who runs a company called Stargaze Entertainment. Yeah. He literally said, oh, you know, I really want to do the UK Gangster Tour. Yeah. And he reached out to pretty much everybody and said, do you want to be in it? Yeah. Some people said <clears throat> they didn't want to do it. Some people said they did want to do it. Some people were busy. But yeah. I think we've got a great selection from, yeah. from yourself, me, Nick Moran. Um, we've got Vass Backwood. Jamie Foreman. Um, Jamie Foreman, Roland Manukian. Yeah. So we have got a nice selection of nice. Frank Harper. Yeah. Nice looking. selection of guys uh, doing these meet and greet tours. Yeah, looking forward to it. Um, and, you know, I, I thought about it and I thought, actually, if you could spend money and go out and have a night out with these guys, and, and the places they're going, like Kingston, Enfield, yeah. Leeds, Birmingham, places that, you know, you don't normally... Would have yeah. that, so the, yeah. We might have all been in these places, but not yeah. all at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So to actually have, be able to have a picture, to be able to have a chat, to have us on stage talking, yeah. uh, them asking questions, I think it's a ingenious thing. And yeah, I actually said idea. to said to Kaz, I said I think it's great. And the the plan, um, obviously, was was to do the first UK British Gangster tour yeah. this year, and then next year in 2024, take it on overseas. But also do the other because obviously the UK is a massive place. Of course, to actually get all the sounds. So uh, yeah, we could be quite busy next year just doing that. <laughs> I, hope, I, hope, I hope we are. I hope we are, mate. In between I, being movie stars, yeah, I hope we are. Cutting think, hair, I, yeah, exactly, and doing yeah. podcasts. I, I hope we are because I think it's a great thing to do to give back to the fans. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And have a night with them, and I think Absolutely. it'd be fantastic to do Because also, you know, you can come and t to a film premiere, but there's seven hundred people there. It's all a bit manic, it's yeah. a bit chaotic. People are drunk. Uh, some of the actors might not be there because they're travelling or they're working on another film. Yeah. But then on something like this, like we're there. Do you know what yeah, I mean? So, yeah. you know, we got, you got us for four or five hours, however long you want us for. Unbelievable. <laughs> I can't wait. Make sure you check it out. Yeah, brilliant. Well, Josh, thank you so much for coming on. My pleasure. I really enjoyed um, it. We've had a great, um, great chat today. Good chat. And, we always uh, have a good chat. And, uh, you know, it was just good hearing, hearing about your life and about all the things you've been through and experienced. And, you know, I think, you know, you've grown into... A lovely man. Thank you. Appreciate um, that. And, uh, you know, you, you're doing well as an actor. And, you know, you've got your business as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, I'm excited as a friend and oh, also as a, uh, as a colleague to see what you do over the next 13 years. I hope so. Well, thanks, Phil. We'll, Very we'll nice of you to say that, mate. We'll Appreciate do, that. We'll, in 13 years' time, come back on it. Yeah. And you'll be 50 and I'll be 65. Yeah. And, and we can I'll, have a chat and say, well, what did we do since we had that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck it, no. Have we become more inappropriate? Yeah, or probably. Or less inappropriate? Mo probably more inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. have, has, Josh, have you been cancelled yet? <laughs> oh, f***ing, no, I hope not. <laughs> so thank you for watching the latest episode of the Criminal Connection podcast. Josh Myers, what a laugh, what a guest, what a legend. Make sure you tune in next week. We've got more great guests, more great stories, more banter, more fun. Criminal Connection podcast, Terry Stone, the Podfather. Check it out. See you next week.